Hi traders, welcome to this overview of the STD indicator, which is part of the version 2.5 arbitrage system. This is an integral part of the system. This is where all the monitoring of the spread and the spread in relationship to the trigger levels takes place. Um, we can see the spread is, is the light blue line here, and this is really the relationship between the two instruments which you're, you're trying to ARP. In this case, we're looking at the S&P 500 index and the GER 30 index, which is the DAX German index. So we can see the way the light blue line spread oscillates around its own mean. The mean is the dark blue line running through the middle of the spread. And the idea behind ARBing is to basically set upper and lower trigger levels. The upper trigger level is the dotted red line, the lower trigger level is the dotted yellow line. And we're trying to set those around typical peaks in divergence from the mean. And what happens is when the spread touches the lower trigger level, it will basically buy the first pair in the spread, which is in this case is the S&P 500, and simultaneously sell the GER 30, the DAX, and vice versa for where the spread touches the upper trigger level line. The system would basically sell the first pair, i.e. the S&P 500, and buy the DAX and the GE 30. And when the spread returns to its moving average, the system would then exit both trades, leaving you with a profit. That's essentially a simple concept behind divergence or statistical arbitrage. If we then apply those rules, which we talked about before, in just a vanilla state, without any risk control, and with no consideration for the direction of the trend in the spread, we can see how this would translate into a win-loss ratio. In the first case, we can see here, the system would open a sell order for the S&P 500 and a buy order for the DAX, and would close those trades when the spread reverted to the mean. That would have been a winner. This second trade here would have been a loser, the reason being we buy the S&P 500 and sell the DAX on the basis of the actual spread was going to strengthen. If you can look at the moving average, the spread actually weakened from our entry point and we'd have closed here when the spread reverted, so that would have been a small loss. Second trade, sorry, third trade would have been a winner. Fourth trade would have been a winner. Fifth trade would have been a winner. Sixth trade would have been a loser. Same reason, again, would have sold the S&P 500 and bought the DAX on the basis that the spread would weaken but in actual fact, the spread, the moving average of the spread strengthened, and our exit was actually higher than our entry point. And the final trade was again a winner. So, overall, this is on a weekly time frame, which is a very long period of time. You can see it's from April 2009 through to uh, current time. And that only, only produced seven trades. But the actual channel width here, based upon 10 equal lots per leg, of the ARP was about uh, $37,500. So our five winners would have netted us $37,500. Two losers, less than 15000 because if you look at the, lose, the loss there, the actual loss was substantially less than the width of the channel. So in any case, let's use 15000 as a, a worst case scenario, giving us a total gain of $22,500. Clearly, this is just a hypothetical example. There aren't many people who would run long-term ARBs like this. Although, as you can see, taking the longer-term perspective can be very profitable without any form of risk control or money management. Uh, the system of mean reversion clearly has a lot of merit. So there you go. That's just a simple walkthrough of the mean reversion system used in this case with indices.